So we start passing out food, and that's when you can really feel like the tension building up. And I didn't understand it at the time at all. I was like, why is this like this? And I can kind of understand it now, but I, I will never understand it because probably in my life I will never know real hunger. None of us will probably know real, real hunger. Um, we started passing out food, and um, the kids are really tense towards each other. Um, you see a kid in the back, like, eating this food really quick and then, like, looking like he's moseying into the front, like, oh, I didn't get my plate, when you know he did. And it's really hard to look a kid in the face and say, you can't have another plate. I know you're hungry, but you can't because we have to make sure everybody gets food. Um, and so we got about three-fourths of the way done and we ran out of food, um, which was really hard um, because they have been waiting there for hours. And they were looking forward to this, and then we didn't have enough. Um, and so they, they got their juice anyway, and they're like, this fighting over this juice, like they really think it's going to fill up their bellies. Um, so that was really, it was really hard, um, because then, you know, like, you know, they're just, they're just going to get a month to eat for their meal that day. Um, so again, at the time, I didn't understand, like, why are they fighting over juice? Like, they're throwing punches to where they're spilling the juice everywhere. Like, why are you acting like that? Because it's survival for them. Um, these kids, and most of them were younger than me. Um, it, was really, it was really hard to look at. It's really hard to, to comprehend and explain. Um, but Pastor Nall, he's the one with the connection to La Celine afterwards, um, pretty much hit the nail on the head of, of how I had been feeling that whole time of, um, you know, why, why was I born into my circumstances and these people born into their circumstances? Like, why? Why? <laughs> um, and Pastor Renault pretty much said the same thing. He said, I don't know why I've been blessed with these resources, but all I know is that I've been called to this place and I'm going to serve in this place because this is where God wants me. Um, you know, I'm going to use my resources for people that have none. Um, so, uh, that was that was La Celine. Um, definitely something I'll never ever forget. Um, and I just know that that people will continue to serve there, but um, still people people are gonna die. People are people are gonna starve. Um, they feed their kids mud cookies because they believe that it's better to die with something in your stomach than to just die. Um, which it's crazy to try to comprehend. Because we'll never know that. We have a full fridge to go to. Um, so, I, and I really hope to go back there as well. So in all of this, another huge lesson that I learned was about thankfulness. Um, I met a lot of people, and it was, it was mostly meeting Americans that um, their parents were divorced or you know, they just had a bad home life. And, um, and I got to Skype my parents every single night and see them and I got to see my brothers a couple times and every night my dad would turn around the computer the video and show uh, show me my dogs at home um, and I just realized really how blessed am I to be able to go home to that four bedroom house and then to move to Auburn and live in a four bedroom like dorm or apartment style dorm um, so uh, I, I made little lists like almost every day of things I was thankful for um, and you know, just observations in the classroom and um, I didn't realize it at the time and my mom put something on Facebook about it but one day I um, wrote down that I was thankful for trash cans because we never had a trash can in our classroom and I know there were trash cans around there somewhere but there's never one in our trash in, in our classroom excuse me and um, I always had all this paper that I needed to throw away. So the day that I wrote that down, we had a trash can, and I was thankful for that trash can. Um, so, and I've, I've really tried to um, keep that habit going since I've been back, just to recognize things that I'm thankful for. It's a lot harder here because we pretty much have everything that we want. We don't have to worry about not having a trash can. Um, and if we don't, we'll find one, and then we have a trash can and that's okay. Um, so it, it's been hard. It's been hard to try, to try to continue that. But 
Um, it's going. It's going. Um, I was so scared to come back home. I was absolutely terrified because, um, and I just read in this book, there's a book called Kisses from Katie or Kisses for Katie. Um, it's about this this girl from Tennessee that's called Uganda, and she moves there, and she's just gone for a year, and she's been there ever since, and it's been years and years, and she's adopted like 14 little girls. It's the coolest story ever, but I'm reading it beforehand, and she says, you know, she wouldn't want to go back to America because of the complacency and, you know, the creature comforts and just things that we don't need and that we, that we use to comfort us instead of using God as our comfort. And so I didn't really get it, but then a couple weeks into being in Haiti, I'm like, whoo, Katie, I gotcha. I totally know what you mean. Um, I didn't want to slip back into that, those same habits of complacency and, and comfort and, you know, depending on myself. Because in Haiti, we had to get everything from God. We had to get our strength. We had to find our comfort. We had to find our encouragement. We had each other, but, you know, we, we didn't have the physical things. Um, to help us out. So, I mean, it seriously burdened me for weeks and weeks about coming home. I'm like, I would stay here and stay here and stay here. Um, but I knew I had to go back. And um, then, you know, another instance of God saying, listen here, um, I was listening to music on my computer one night and um, Come Thou Fountain of Every Blessing was I was playing and um, I wasn't really listening. But I'm praying about um, about my fear of coming home and the very last part of that song. Like I had been listening to the whole song, and of course I started listening at this point. And it says, "Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it in Thy courts above." And I'm like, "That's all I gotta do." I just gotta get my heart up because I know I'm prone to wander, and I know that I'm gonna find. I can say I love God so much, but I'm gonna find other things um, as idols and to find comfort in. Um, but all I can do in this situation is give you my heart and ask you to keep it up there. Um, and so I, I held tight to those lyrics for weeks and weeks, and still now I have it hanging on my wall um, in my dorm. Remember, here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it in my courts above. Um, so I, it's been a, it was a fine transition back. Um, I flew back on a Saturday, and then I moved back to Auburn the next Friday. So I didn't have much time at home at all. Um, but it was, those few days were, were days of trying to get everything together to move back, but of, um, of solitude and just trying to to grasp what was happening um but i definitely feel called to go back i know i've said that a couple times but i really think i'm going back in december um right after the finals i'm really hoping that it works out um and i and my mom may be going with me as well she told me that that would be cool um, I just can't not wait to go back and see those kids because we got to invest in them for, for quite a long period of time. And um, there was a long-term volunteer there named Amber. She was from Virginia. And um, she was there for a year, and she leaves in December, so we're really hoping to go back and see her again. She was so cool. She was the coolest person I've ever met. Um, so all this to say that there is not one bad thing that that I got from Haiti. Not a single thing. There's not anything that burdens me. Um, you know, there's there I look back at my trip and there's nothing negative about it at all. And so my encouragement is if you have a chance to go somewhere, take it. Take it in a heartbeat. Leave your leave your comfort zone because I was so far out of my comfort zone and it ended up being the most amazing experience. Um, and, and I don't believe that you have to go out of the country, but I, it'll change your heart, seeing it and living in it. Um, so that's my encouragement. Um, I wanted to ask you guys to pray for a couple things. Um, the children, 
all 37 of them, um, we did find out that uh, little Lee Jay, he is six, five or six probably, he accepted Christ the other day, which is so cool. Um, and, you know, they're being raised in a wonderful, wonderful Christian environment, but still they live in Haiti. And, um, and they, they get prayer all the time, all the time. Um, also for Miss Sherry, because she runs an orphanage in Haiti, and she needs some prayer, I think. Um, and then one Sunday while we were there, we went, we went to an English-speaking church, and sometimes we went to the Creole-speaking church. And Creole-speaking churches are like three hours long, and then you have to kneel and pray, and they all turn around and kneel like faces to the seats. And those seats do not smell good, and everyone's sweaty, and it's not good. But we went to an English-speaking church one Sunday, and um, the pastor, I think the pastor said it the best, um, he really believes that there will be revival in Haiti, and I believe, I believe it as well. Um, Haiti is really corrupt from the government. There's a lot of voodoo and, and stuff like that. But since the earthquake, you know, there's been such... Um, uh, so many, you know, Christian nonprofits that have come in. I really do think that there will be revival in Haiti. And he said, wouldn't it be awesome for Haiti to be known for Christ rather than a natural disaster? Um, and so that's my prayer for Haiti. And I hope that's your prayer for Haiti. And I'm gonna ask that you pray for our our um, our ministry as we go back, hopefully in December. And if God calls me, maybe I'll go back all next summer. We'll see. I would love to. Um, so, yeah, if you guys would just pray for that, that would be so awesome. And thank you so much for letting me come today. Even before I left, Papa asked me to come up here and, and talk to y'all. So he had expectations that God was going to work in my life as well, and he did. So thanks. Um, and thank you guys for prayer while we were there. We so appreciate it.